Well, here we are. We're going to go ahead and cover a lampshade. This is an old lampshade to an old lamp that I had covered before. In fact, this is a um, shower curtain I had cut up that I like the fabric so well and um, made the lampshade covered. It's an old lamp and it's one of those paper formed lampshades. The materials I'm using, I'm using iron to iron the fabric. I made a template for the little clematis flowers. Um, tacky glue, clothespins, straight pins, and a pair of scissors. And it took about, um, it will take about a yard and a half of fabric. I'm pinning down my templates and going to cut those out. As uh, Once I cut these out, I'm going to go ahead and throw these in the dryer so they'll fray around the edges and we'll be able to um, sew them on to the shade that we cut out. I'll cut on the bias, which means it's on the diagonal of the fabric. We're going to go ahead and use clothespins. It helps mark it for me where it needs to go. I'm going to down here kind of a wide cut. We'll clean it up in a little bit. Got a tight fit. And it's right on the seam of the, um, the existing lampshade. Now I'm going to cut only a half an inch from the edge of the lampshade. You don't want too much uh, of a seam because it will show when the lamp is on. So we'll cut about a half an inch to fold under and tacky glue. We'll do this on both sides. I've trimmed the top off about a half an inch. I'm going to save doing the bottom in a little bit. I am trimming the back side that will be the underside to the seam that I glue to the lampshade. But what I'm going to do now is place my pieces that I've pulled out of the dryer and pin those on. Once I pin them on, I will sew them. on and then I will sew them. I'm using straight pins. Now this is the point where if you don't have a sewing machine you can tacky glue them. And the tacky glue, and I always keep my tacky glue, there's different brands and anybody can use whatever white glue you like, but I always keep it laying on the side. People always have a tendency to come and pick it up and stand it upright. But what happens is if you lay it on the side then it'll be quicker to pour out because there will be less air on the top, doesn't have to move all the way to the bottom because it's a very thick glue. So if you lay it on the side and you tip it, all the air goes to the bottom. It's kind of like a ketchup bottle. That's a little hard to see because there's tan on tan on tan, 
But what I'm doing is I'm pinning all of these down. I'm going to sew them on, and as I said, you can tacky glue those on. I would glue those on right around the edges, about a half an inch in all the way around like that on each side. And you would end up with the same effect if you don't have a sewing machine. Or if you're a little bit more crafty than that, a really cool thing would be to um, go ahead and just top stitch it in big stitches. It might kind of have an interesting effect. I do have a sewing machine and so I am sewing these. It's about, I'll say about three quarters of an inch from the edge of the petal, but you can glue it with the tacky glue and you could hand stitch it also. So don't forget about, you know, you don't have to have a sewing machine to do these types of things. There's many ways to do it without having a machine. Although the fabric did go through the dryer, um, the little petals, um, it didn't fray as much as I liked. So I'm just kind of grabbing it, pinching it, and pulling it. So it's kind of a little bit looser looking fray. And so kind of up, if it doesn't pull one way, it will pull the other way. So all of these are frayed a little bit more. Have a little kind of a little rougher edge around them. It's kind of a look these days. So I flipped it over so you can see it a little bit better. I'm still close pinning it on. This way, uh, you don't have with any holes or problems with it. And so this is really tight right here where my cut was. But what I'm going to do is I could stretch it because it's on the bias. I can stretch it. Clipping off that salvage and stretching it nicely. And pinning that together with clothes pins. Now I'm starting, this is the where it all meets. But what I'm doing is to pin the bottom, I'm starting in the middle of that in between each edge. So that way it'll end up more even. If you start in the middle and work your way out, then you're lines will work out better. You won't end up stretching it one way or another and ending up having to start over. Now because it's cut on the bias, it does have a lot of stretch. Go ahead and stretch it pretty tight. It'll make it look better. You see some of these petals of these flowers will come over the edge. So it looks like it was intended. And once I have this all stretched out, then I'll glue it. Um, I've discovered that here where it meets, I'll go ahead and I'll clip this right here. It's not necessarily right on the line of the uh, where the shape would be, but it's on a good line where the flower is. So there's not a difference in how the flowers lie. I've got the light on to see if I need to adjust and clip some of this a little bit more even. You can see in the light that that's not trimmed out quite as nice as it should be. I'm not really crazy with the scissors. A bit. I'm using the tacky glue to attach it to the top. The fold over is probably about a quarter of an inch higher than the actual original shade. And I will go all the way around. I, I like using a brush. It's just better than trying to squeeze it on. You have better control. So I just squeeze it into a plate. Or some little palette type thing. And I pull it up. I start on the opposite end of where the seam is on the back. That way I work from the middle and come towards the seam. When I come to the end, I've gone halfway around. Then I just fold it under just a little bit. I put a little dollop of glue and then I'll clip it. Okay. I've glued all the way around. 
top and the bottom and here is where I connect right here again I'm going to work from the center like I was saying I cut this at a bit of an angle and I'm gluing this in at an angle so I can get that last petal on I was telling you I was using a paintbrush to apply my glue that's under my petal I'm starting from the middle just as I I did with the rest of it and so and I believe that will stay pretty good and tacky glue takes about 20 minutes to to uh, dry um, right here in the corner where I'm pulling that together Folding a little bit, mitering it in that corner, folding it under. That's where we'll put the clothespin. And then down here, we're going to do the same. Right down here. And you know, you may have to manip manipulate it through the process. It won't be uh, super easy. I'd be lying to you if I said this is going to be real easy. There's going to be bits and parts that pucker and you're going to have to kind of back up and that's the beauty of the tacky glue too is um, you can pull it out and kind of start fresh so here I am holding that under also making a little fold in here 45 degree fold and stretching it extra dollar of glue Now I'm going to take these pins off. If you end up with little puckers, you kind of rub them out with your fingers. The puckers from the uh, clothes pins. If those clothes pins sit on there too long, you will end up with some funny little clothes pin spots. See them come out. 